All right, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to be working on the trailer or touching up the trailer or anything like that. Today we're going to talk about the cost that we have in this build. And uh, if you want to know what the cost is for my build, stick around. Okay, so I've had a lot of questions on how much did it cost me to build my trailer. And uh, let me say right off the bat that this is my trailer, this is my build, this is the theme that I wanted to go with, and uh, it's not necessarily the cost that you might incorporate in your build. So let's start out with uh, the trailer frame. I do have a list that I broke down into some categories. I rounded things uh, up. To the nearest dollar so we've got a grand total and we're going to start off talking about the trailer the trailer frame uh, consists of the trailer frame itself all the metal fabrication the axle the wheels the tires and uh, everything that we needed to put the trailer together the coupler and the lights and all that good stuff and i am no welder so i had somebody have fill up, fab up the trailer frame for me. So the total cost of my trailer frame uh, with all the extra goodies that I had and the style and look that I was going for cost me a total of an unbelievable $2,100. So yeah that's a little on the high side. That is all the paint. That is all the couplers. That is all the safety chains. Uh, all the welding. The metal. Everything to put that thing together. So $2,100 and that is my build. Now with that being said, if you are deciding to build your trailer, there are several people who already purchased the plans and started their build. Actually, they finished their build and they used uh, prefab trailer frames, Harbor Freight or Northern Tool, something like that. And all they did is modify it a little bit for the length of the trailer frame and they built their cabin on top and they look great. So you're looking at uh, one of those trailer frames around $350, maybe up to $500. So uh, $2,100 I know is a lot of money for a lot of people. Actually, it's a lot of money for me. I can't believe I spent that kind of money. But uh, you can build it for a lot less and still come out with a nice looking trailer uh, that several people have done already. Next up on our list is the wood that I use to build the cabin. Uh, I used a lot of half inch plywood. I used a couple of sheets of the three quarter inch plywood. I used three, uh, two or three pieces of the quarter inch plywood. And all the railing that's in there, all of the spars, I used the one by two white pine. I doubled everything up to make a two by two. Uh, so I used a lot of those. And to get everything together, to make it nice and solid, the wood alone uh, is probably, I think I have around $700 in it. This is a maple. Uh, some people uh, might opt for a birch or they might just go ahead and use the uh, AC sanded. Uh, most of this is covered either inside or outside so you can use a lesser grade plywood and still get away and accomplish uh, what you want. I've seen a lot of builds where they did use the AC sanded plywood and once they sanded and stained, uh, they looked just great. So you could probably save $300, $400 by using a lesser grade plywood. So $700 for the wood. Okay, the next big bite on this trailer was the, uh, the siding that I used for the sides. I also did the bottom and the top in Phylon. And... Uh, Phylon is a very good material, it's very durable, and it will hold its value. Uh, I chose the Phylon over the aluminum uh, only because I think the aluminum, if you damage it, you, you're going to have to replace a whole panel. And if I get a chip or a hole or something like that in the Phylon, if you know how to repair fiberglass, you only have to deal with one little spot, and it will still come out looking great. Uh, so I chose the Phylon over the aluminum uh, 
but that's not necessarily the route that you need to go. I've seen a couple builds where they did phylon siding and aluminum on the top. Those with the aluminum siding, you're almost unlimited in the colors that you can purchase. So uh, why not? And it's a lot less expensive than the phylon. So what I have in the phylon on this one, and this includes the glue, and I probably used about almost two gallons of the of the glue, the Helmaprene, which is made by Helmington, uh, which I purchased at the same time I did the phylon. I have $872 in the phylon alone, and uh, I've seen a couple builds where, like I said, they use aluminum, or if you decided not to use the aluminum or the phylon, you can go with a, a stained or a varnished wood look siding. And uh, one gentleman, he stained his like in a, a cherry wine with varnish over it. Beautiful job. And I know that he has a lot less cost in it than I do. And uh, yeah, that looked really good. So $872 in the phylon. Now, if you're adding all this stuff up, it's starting to get pretty expensive just starting out of the hole. You got the trailer frame, and you got the, the wood for the cabin, and you got the phylon. And uh, boom, I'm off of my budget already. So the next big hit on this trailer was the doors themselves. They were prefabricated. I purchased those from Vintage Technology, and those doors cost me $770, almost $800. Uh, but I like the looks of them. They're solid, they're sturdy, they're the they're right size, and they go with the theme that I was looking for for this trailer. So that's what I went, went with. They're 770 bucks for the pair, and it comes with all the uh, hardware that you're going to need to fasten these things, to mount them onto the trailer, and also the gutters and uh, vinyl trim that you would need to cover all the screws. Now with that being said, uh, not necessarily the route that you need to take. You can take the plans and fab up your own doors and make your own doors for a lot less money. And so there, there's a, there's a little bit of cost savings for you. But for me, 770 bucks. All right, the next item on our list, as I categorize my list, is the hardware. So the hardware is going to include. A lot of the uh, aluminum trim that I purchased for covering up the wood, the drawer slides, uh, the hinges for the doors, uh, some of the spring here for the uh, <laughs> dog on it for the hatch uh, supports and things like that. And uh, let's see what did I have in that. So for a lot of the hardware. And we're talking little pieces here and there. I had about $345. And uh, <laughs> if I had to itemize that, I can't tell you exactly where all that came from. But I know a lot of the pieces that I purchased were pretty expensive. Uh, all the door, door slides and things like that. And I'm pretty sure there's stuff in here I'm not looking at that added to that cost. And so uh, I was a little surprised when I looked at the hardware and said, wow, 345 bucks. Dang. You know, material and stuff like that isn't cheap anymore. So $345 for the hardware. And I'm thinking that might be including, let me make sure. No, that's not including fasteners. 345 bucks. Switch sides on you. Okay, the next thing on our list is the lights. So I purchased these little puck lights. I got these off of Amazon. I've got uh, about, I think, six sets here, and I've got a couple of reading lights, and I believe that includes the little touch switches that I used. Uh, that run me about 150 bucks somewhere in there, maybe a little bit less. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just kind of kind of rounding things off here. But uh, for the style that I was going for, recess lighting, LED and uh, the touch switches, those were kind of expensive actually. And yeah, 150 bucks for the, for the lighting. And you might opt for just the battery operated, which uh, you can just pull a switch and turn on and off, which worked just fine. Uh, but that's what I went with and I'm kind of liking that. 
150 bucks. Okay, now some of the uh, accessories that I put on this, and we're talking about the exhaust fan, and we're talking about the cooler, and oh yeah, the foam for the inside for my mattress. So I use the uh, Max Air fan. It's a little four-speed fan, I believe it is, manual opening. Uh, nothing too deluxe about it. It's Max Deluxe, but I don't think it's all that deluxe. No remote or anything like that. No thermostat control. Uh, that run me about $172. And then the cooler itself, uh, I purchased that through Amazon. And I had a coupon uh, for like 20% off. Plus through Amazon they were offering another 20% off. Somewhere in there. So I spent about $215 on the cooler. That's an added accessory that you probably don't need. When I first started out, I had a red cooler in here, and that's what I designed the galley around for the size. And so a lot of people might use the cooler instead, and you can pick that up for $20 or $30. So you can save a lot of money right there. And the next uh, little accessory on the inside, I used foam supply online, and I purchased uh, my foam mattress for them. They will custom cut the size that you want. They have various uh, density of foam. So for the type of foam I used on the bottom was three inch and I think it's sort of a high quality foam. And then on top of that, I had them glue a uh, three inch memory foam on that. And that foam custom cut was roughly around $292. So a total of the, of the foam and the cooler and uh, the fan run me about $682. Uh, gee, we're not even living in it yet. So, $682 for those accessories that are most likely not needed in your build. Alright, let's talk about another little cool feature that I put in mine. I put a little Suburban two-burner gas stove in mine. Uh, I purchased the stove on eBay. I saw a camping camera. He installed one in his, and I thought, wow, I really like the looks of that stove. Michael did an excellent job on his installation. I wish mine was a little bit wider, so I could have done the installation like he did with the quick disconnects and everything, but uh, I've got limited space back here, so I made do with what I had, and it works just great. So with the stove, and then I bought the, the propane tank, and also the uh, mount for the propane tank. The mount I bought through... I believe Southern Cal, uh, Teardrops. That thing with shipping cost me $100. Uh, yeah. If you could find a way to mount it on the tongue and run a hose back, you could save a few bucks there. The tank, I don't care where you go, that thing's going to cost you 60 bucks. I don't know why that little tank is more expensive than if you went with a bigger tank. Seems like the bigger you go, the less expensive it is. Go figure. So, with the tank, and with the mount, and with all the fittings, and with the hose, and with the stove, I had a grand total of about $300 into that. So that's a $300 setup. I'm happy with it. It works great, and uh, it's going to serve its purpose well, and it looks great in the back. So, $300. Bucks. Tell them what's next, Jim. Okay, well, here it is. Next is the trim and uh, all the seals that I put on the trailer. I purchased probably around six or eight sticks of the uh, inch and a quarter by five eighths inch leg uh, aluminum trim with the insert that goes around the whole perimeter of the cabin itself. And then I purchased all of the seals. I purchased the seals and the trim through Vintage Technology. Uh, I really like those guys. Most of the time you have to call them in. You can't purchase online. Very nice people to deal with. And uh, the shipping is pretty quick. A little high on the shipping. So what I would suggest is you go on there, buy everything that you think you're going to need. And we're talking, oh yeah, I guess in the hardware. That would have been the, the uh, latch for the lid, all the trim, the seals, springs, anything that you're looking for, get in one place and pay that shipping one time. Uh, the shipping is about 40 bucks, no matter how many pieces of trim you buy. Uh, I ended up being one piece short, and so <laughs> I had to buy, bite the bullet and pay 
forty dollars for a fifteen piece or fifteen dollar piece of trim. So costly mistake on my side. So for my aluminum trim and uh, seals, I have roughly around two hundred fifty dollars in there somewhere, maybe just a just a hair more. Uh, and I'm not counting the, I'm not counting the shipping or any mistakes that I made along the way, where I had to purchase an extra piece. Two hundred fifty bucks. Another option that I went for was the diamond plate. I decided to put diamond plate on the back and also on the front, uh, just mostly for aesthetics, but it will also help traveling down the road. Uh, the reason why is the last trailer I built, I uh, covered the outside with aluminum instead of the phylon or uh, anything like that. And the first trip that I went on, uh, and we had gravel on the road and it kicked up and I've got these little dents and I thought, you know, I don't want to see that on this little trailer. So we decided to, we, me, decided to go with the diamond plate on the front and on the back. And I purchased a four foot by eight foot sheet and that cost me roughly around $132. Custom Metal, I believe, online is where I purchased that. It was actually pretty reasonable. I think it was $100, but then you got to pay the shipping. Uh, heavy duty material, easy to, easy to work with and cut, durable. So it's going to last this trailer a, a long time before you see any damage on that. So I think it matched really well. I like it. It's my build, and that's what I wanted. So I did it. $132. Bucks. Next on our list is all the tape. Is all the sealant and uh, well, maybe some gaskets here and there. Gaskets, I'm talking about butyl tape and that kind of thing. Uh, but I spent roughly about 150 bucks. Yeah, I'm guessing around 150 bucks. We're talking ProFlex, and I think at the store I was purchasing from, that stuff's around 14, maybe 15 bucks a tube. I ended up quite a bit of that. Uh, I really like the ProFlex. Anyone who recommended to that re recommended that to me uh, appreciate that much because I really like working with that. It's good stuff, flexible but good adhesive. And uh, then we're talking about the tape. When I say tape, we're talking about the blue tape that I used, masking this thing off, and uh, I ended up having purchased a couple rolls. So all that stuff, little things add up, 150 bucks. Last but not least. It's all the little things that are going to get you. We're talking the screws, we're talking the little wire connectors, we're talking the tubing that covers the wiring. Uh, just all those little things that I made. I made 50 trips to the store, maybe 10 trips to the store in one day. Going to the store to get a handful of screws, coming back with a box full, and, and uh, you know, wow, those fasteners sure do add up. And especially if you're using stainless steel, those are going to be a lot costly. So a lot of people ask me, how come I uh, chose a certain fastener over another? And it's the cost, because uh, I'm telling you, I built a sailboat one time, and all the stainless steel fasteners I used, I had about $2,000 in just stainless steel parts alone. And uh, a lot of this is hidden behind phylon. It's hidden inside, under the wood. It's sealed, and there's no reason to go to that extreme. I don't expect water to get into this thing, so I opted not to use the stainless steel, and yet, with not using all the deluxe fasteners that still run me, 350 bucks for all those little pieces that I needed uh, for this trailer. Now, that's my build, and the way that I fastened it all together, and the type of uh, connections and connectors and all that little tubing crap that I wanted to use to make the to make the trailer look as professional as, as I possibly could and I think I did a, a fairly well job uh, I'm sure that uh, there's tons of guys out there that do a heck of a lot better than I did my hats off to them big salute so 350 bucks so if you've been keeping score you tally all this up and we're looking at trailer frame, wood, the phylon, all the doors and the hardware and the lights and the fans and coolers and mattress. 
propane stove and all the trim, diamond plate, the tape and seals and gaskets and all the fasteners and the parts that I used, I have about $6,800 into this build. Uh, $6,800 is still a pretty good deal for me for the style and the theme that I'm going for. We haven't reached the end yet, so you don't know what this thing's really going to look like and uh, the finished product, which I think you're going to like. So, price little trailers out there. You're going to be surprised. Uh, let's see if I can back up. I can show you a couple here, and I tried to find as many 4x8 trailer uh, that I could, teardrop trailers, with the cost that if you were to buy a manufactured um, trailer, expect to pay this amount. And these are starting prices. So if you want some of the options, if you want the stoves, if you want sinks, if you want deluxe lights, if you want certain look on the trailer or, or the wheels or the tires, you're going to expect to pay a lot more. And some of these trailers are up into twelve, maybe fifteen thousand dollars. So I built mine for at least half the cost of some of these manufactured models, which I don't think are going to last nearly as long as mine do. So I'm pretty happy with what I got into it. It took me uh, a little while to build it, so I didn't blow all of my money at once. And uh, yep, I got a nice looking trailer. So those who are thinking about building your own teardrop trailer, understand that the end result that you want will determine your budget. So if you just want something that you're going to drag out in the woods, you're not uh, showcasing it off, but you want to keep nice and dry, and you're not really concerned about the overall appearance, you can build this trailer for man, you can build this trailer for about fifteen hundred bucks. The first teardrop that I built, I built on a Harbor Freight frame. It was an all wood trailer and I just covered everything in varnish. I think the most expensive thing on that was the Hurricane Hinge and I had $900 in that trailer. It was a very nice looking trailer. I purchased the foam mattress at uh, a nearby, I don't know if it's Walmart or Fred Meyer and those things were like 15 bucks a, for a three inch piece of foam. I ended up going with about six or nine inches deep, but uh, I mean, you could spend a lot less. This is my build, and you don't necessarily have to build it that way. So, when you're starting to do your own budget, price the things out, and remember it's the end result, what you want, that will determine your budget and uh, the cost of your build. So, if you want to start out and you want to save some money, Choose yourself a nice Harbor Freight trailer frame or a northern uh, Northwest trailer frame, Northern Tools, excuse me, and uh, you'll modify the length just a little bit to fit the cabin. You're going to save yourself tons of money. They already come with fenders and everything like that. Uh, also, go with the aluminum. Go with a woody look. Save yourself some money on that area right there. And uh, the type of wood that you use, you could use a sanded plywood for the spars. Uh, several people have also taken 2x4s and cut those down. 2x4s uh, are cheap, a couple bucks, and you, you get four to, you know, maybe two to four pieces out of these things. So uh, a lot of room, a lot of area that you can save money on building your own teardrop. And you don't necessarily have to build this teardrop. You can build your own square drop, uh, box, whatever style you're looking for. Like I said, it's the end result that you're looking for that will des determine your budget. So, for me, I had a theme in mind, which uh, you might get to see here in a couple weeks, and when we're totally finished. So, I'm hoping to uh, have that buttoned up, like I said, in about two weeks. So, I want you to stay tuned for that. So, last but not least, I'm down to the wire where we are almost finished. And with that, there are a lot of little things that I want to take care of, and we will uh, cover that in a future video of the little things that are necessary that we need to get done um, before we can call it complete. And then we will uh, kind of do my own little mod to this and trick it out. Then we'll have the final debut before we call this build finished. So, I think uh, 
in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and take care of some of these little tasks. I may or may not shoot any videos on these. I, I know that there's a couple of things that I think are important that you need to know uh, when you, if you decide to build something along this line. And, uh, I, I, yeah, it'll be helpful. So, that is it. All right, guys, I've rambled on enough. Thank you for sitting through this, watching it, and uh, I love my little trailer. And I think in the end, you're going to like it too. All right, stay tuned.